Hey y'all, back with another video, and this one is going to be all about off-season goals. So if you watched the last series, which if you haven't, you should, uh, it was all about post-competition topics, and I took six different topics that really hit home for me and also for my clients, um, things that people who have done a show really struggle with afterwards, um, but this isn't just for people who compete. This obviously can be for people who compete, um, but it's also just for lifestyle clients and just lifestyle dieting in general. So when you're dieting, you have a very singular focus of I'm trying to lose body fat, I'm trying to lose inches, and it's very easy to see that progress, right? Like it's, I wouldn't say it's linear because progress is never linear when you're dieting, but it's okay. Ideally, the scale is going down over time measurements are going down, your clothes are fitting looser, and it's very straightforward. After a diet, it becomes a little bit more complicated, and it definitely obviously is context dependent. Like, so say you are somebody who is competing, that's gonna be a lot different than if you are trying to maintain the weight that you've lost as like a lifestyle client. So those are all kind of different things, but at some point you have to stop dieting. You can't just diet forever. <laughs> so what's gonna happen afterwards? And I feel, for myself and also for my clients that people really really struggle with this because the goals are just a lot more like all over the place like it's not as singular as dieting and it's not as straightforward um so i wanted to go over a few tips for how i set up off-season goals and how i encourage my clients to as well because it's so so important to have goals even if they are different um than just the dieting goals like you have to have all things like a holistic approach and off season is really when you can tap into that so first and foremost, you still want to have dieting goals, um, regardless, like when I say diet, that's not necessarily calorie restriction, that's just in general, you're eating how you're, di how you're dieting is how you're eating. Um, so for you, that could be maybe, you know, I really want to make sure that I'm adherent to my macros, or that's going to mean I need a little bit more flexibility in my life, because during a diet, things can become very, very rigid, and then you, that can be a whole nother issue. Um, or say, like, I really want to control my binging or overeating, um, and, you know, setting up goals like that for your diet and specific ways to get out of it, right? Like, okay, my goal is to not overeat this off season. How am I going to accomplish it? And if I do happen to overeat, what am I going to do to correct that behavior? So that would be number one. Number two would be a training goal. And this is something that's really, really important for the off season because, or again, off season in this terms means just not in a calorie deficit. Um, so even if you're not somebody who's competing, I'm still calling this off season. Um, so just understand that. Um, training is going to be something that you can really ramp up again once you have calories higher because when you are in a calorie deficit, training can kind of go to the shitter. And no matter how much you try to avoid that, it's just the reality. Um, so maybe you have training goals, like whether it's, you know, so say you want to get back into maybe some like heavy lifting. Um, so okay, I want to hit this on a deadlift or this on a squat, um, or even if it's not necessarily like a compound lift, almost like a power lifting kind of goal, it could be like, I want to, you know, shoulder press, you know, 30s for this many reps or whatever it may be. Um, there can also be cardiovascular fitness goals. Um, I want to keep my rest. That's something that I wanted to work on this off season, keeping my resting heart rate at a certain level. So when I diet, I can get mine lower but naturally my resting heart rate is a little bit higher um even for somebody who's in you know shape air quotes <laughs> um in the off season i've generally lost a lot of aerobic fitness and i've also gained weight so that will make your resting heart rate go up so that's something that i want to keep in check personally for myself this off season now it doesn't mean i'm going to do hours of cardio to do it but i might make my cardio more intense and i might do things like you know like a met con which is like metabolic conditioning like a style workout, like supersets and circuits and things like that, maybe like once a week. Um, so you can have cardiovascular goals as well as just regular training goals. Um, and also for me, this is something else that I'm trying to do. Uh, Ryan, if you're listening, I'm saying this on, out loud on camera, <laughs> um, trying to stay on point with like warm ups and mobility type stuff because I am the fucking worst when it comes to that. I do not, I want to get into the gym and just start working out. And that has been like my demise for the past few years um, with not being able to train very hard. So going in there and having like a set routine, 10, no, 5, 10, 15 minutes, whatever it may be, either at home or at the gym, something that I'm going to be able to stay on top of um, and do. And for anybody who's listening who hates doing that kind of work, trust me, I feel you, but it's really important. And um, it doesn't have to be very extensive, but if you take five minutes before you work out to hit certain spots and to like warm them up properly, your body will thank you if you're somebody who is training hard and trying to, you know, grow muscle. Um, and then, so that's like the obvious stuff, right? Like, okay, training goals, cardio goals, uh, food goals, whatever. 
there's also needs to be mindset and life goals. So when we diet, particularly if you are a competitor, we can get very, very focused on that goal. And that can kind of be the only thing that we're thinking about, which at some point I feel is necessary um, for any goal um, that's very extreme. I think that you know, the final push should be very like tunnel vision towards it. Um, and that's just the nature of the beast, air quotes. Um, but that's not something that you need to maintain for the rest of your life, right? You need to have other goals outside of it. So for me, you know, like mindset goals or just, you know, like mental space goals are important to work on as well. Um, so it could be things like journaling or meditation or, you know, just going on like a walk and like clearing your mind, like whatever it looks like to you mentally that you need to work on that is something that i think should be kind of in this like bucket of off-season goals is mental space goals so for me i know that I, i've heard from like all the you know important smart influential rich people that meditating is super important tim ferris has been talking about this for years every time you interview somebody who's successful this is what they talk about I've listened to books. I actually bought a book called Meditating for Fidgety Skeptics because I'm a fidgety skeptic and I still haven't done it. <laughs> but there is a lot of really powerful research as far as meditation and like positive thinking and like law of attraction. All these things go together, however you want to call them. Um, but there does seem to be really cool things that happen to our brain when we do that. So for me, it's very challenging, um, but most things in life that are have a good outcome are challenging. So I'm going to try, I'm also saying this on camera, <laughs> going to try and take a few minutes to, again, whatever the meditation looks like for you, it doesn't, that's different to everybody. Some people do it for like an hour, some people do like guided ones on their phone, some people just go for a walk, like whatever it may be, I'm gonna try to find something that works, even if it is just like, you know, a few minutes. Um, and that's going to be kind of like a mindset, mental space goal for me. And lastly, a life goal, right? Like there is life outside of fitness. Um, even if you are in the fitness industry, you have to be doing things outside of fitness. Otherwise, you're gonna go crazy. Um, and that can look very different to everybody, right? So say like, say you are in the fitness industry and this is sort of like your job, like, or you know, whatever it may be like for me your like lifestyle goal can be something like towards your business and if you're not if it's not you know within the fitness industry you can still have a business goal or you can just have like a life outside of you know completely outside of business completely outside of fitness like all of that just like a fun goal like something that you want to take up right like maybe you're like a really creative person and you want to start doing something for like a creative outlet um clearly i'm not very creative because i can't think of fucking something that would fit into this category but there's plenty of things that would i'm just drawing a serious blank um so usually i try to funnel into the business stuff um, but I should probably go into more of the other avenues as well. Um, it could be like literally it could be anything and even like self-development stuff. So like, right, like this is something for me that I want to get back into, um, is like reading, you know, a few nights per week or, you know, day, whatever, reading a few days per week. And that's something that I kind of fell out of the habit of with prep one, just because of being really busy and then two, being pretty brain dead, not like wanting to pick up a book and read it. Um, so I've gotten into a lot more listening as far as like podcasts and audiobooks, which are amazing, but I do think that reading is different. Um, and I don't know, don't ask me the scientific reason why, but I do think that there's something different to reading. Um, and I do want to get back into that. And I have so many books in this fabulous office that I'm speaking in that I haven't been able to read. Um, and I need to get on that. So for me, like a life goal is going to be getting back into reading several days slash nights per week. So I would say that there's probably even more buckets of goals that you could have, but for people who are tuning into this channel, I feel like these would probably be the most applicable some kind of diet goal, some kind of training goal, some kind of mindset goal, and some kind of just life goal. Um, and write this down, and this can totally change. So right, like you can finish your diet, and then you can be like, hey, these are the things that I wanna work on, these four things. And don't make it 47 things, make it like four. And then you can do that for a few weeks, and then if you wanna keep going with that, then keep going with that, or if you wanna edit it, or just tweak it, do that as well. Um, the list can change, and it probably should change. Like say for me, like if I get back into the habit of reading, I need to make another goal because I've already hit that, right? Um, but just in general, you you know, I fall into the, if I write a list about something and I don't do it perfectly, then I'm like, oh my God, I like totally failed on it. No, 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 you can write this down, write these goals down, and then you can edit them over time. And just, you know, be honest with yourself. Like, have you actually gotten into the habit of 
doing X. If you have, then move on and pick another thing. And if you haven't, then you need to like actually step it up and get to work on it. But I really think that you guys will find it helpful to have more tangible off-season goals because it is one of the hardest things transitioning from a diet phase to a non-dieting phase um, is this kind of lack and this like slump of like, oh, what do I do next? And then we can kind of fall into these like really shitty patterns of like, I don't know if I really want to go to the gym. I don't really want to do my cardio. I just want to eat like an asshole. Now I've gained weight. Should I diet again? And then the loop fucking continues. So hopefully this was helpful, you guys. Thank you for tuning in and I'll catch you next time.